Now, I want to answer a very important question that people have today. What day is the church to worship? There are those who continue as Christians to wor uh, worship on the Sabbath, which is Saturday. Why don't we worship on the Sabbath, which is Saturday? Why do we worship on Sunday? Well, I believe there is biblical reason to worship as a church on Sunday. And I want to just show you those biblical points. It's called From Sabbath to the Lord's Day. There's a book by that titled by Dr. Uh, Carson, a professor at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. But this is the thought here, that the movement of God's people by the Spirit of God was from Saturday to Sunday to distinguish the Christians from the Jews, from the Hebrews. After the Sabbath, at the dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Matthew 28, verse 1. The Gospels declare that Jesus rose again on the first day of the week, after the Sabbath. And so this became a mark of, of emphasis on this first day of the week. How significant would it be? Why do most Christian groups recognize Sunday, the first day of the week, as the day of worship and rest? There is significant evidence that the early church shifted from the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, to Saturday. The first day of the week ultimately became known as the Lord's Day based on the resurrection taking place on the first day of the week. So there's significant evidence. Again, the evidence has to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It took place on that first day of the week. And here we have what I just read. There was on not the Sabbath, but after the Sabbath that the Lord Jesus rose again and it was the first day of the week. But that's not all. Jesus appeared to the disciples on the first day of the week. On the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together, the doors locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. So Jesus could have appeared on any day, but there seems to be some significance that not only was he raised from the dead, resurrected on the first day of the week, but he appeared on the first day of the week. And not once, but a couple of times. In contrast to Judaism, the early church established a pattern of meeting on the first day of the week. Acts 20, verse 7, as Paul was in Ephesus, he said, On the first day of the week we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, they kept talking until midnight. Now, it may be an incidental thing that it's mentioned on the first day of the week, but it must have some significance. It's in the text. Why is it there? Something's being established here. They were meeting on the first day of the week as a church. They were being distinguished. They were setting themselves apart from the practice of meeting on the Sabbath with the Jewish people. And notice well that in Corinthians chapter 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2, on the first day of the week, each of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income, saving it up, so that when I come, no collection will have to be made. They're setting some money aside on the first day of the week. Again, the first day is mentioned in this connection with uh, worship of the Lord. And then we have it in the book of Revelation. It is evident that the first day of the week became known as the Lord's Day by the end of the first century AD. On the Lord's Day I was in the Spirit, John said, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. The Lord's Day, so the title from Sabbath to the Lord's Day. A change has taken place. And so for centuries now, most churches have gathered on the first day, on Sunday, as a time of worship. Not to worship the day, nor even the events of 
the resurrection, or other events, but to worship, rather, the recognition of God doing a new thing, bringing a new era, the New Testament age, not uh, uh, opposed to the Old Testament, but an emphasis of the New Testament times, which include the Spirit of God being given to every believer and the offer through the gospel of coming to Jesus Christ. Now, why don't we become emphatic or legalistic about which day of the week to worship? Why don't we argue and say everyone who is a Christian must worship on Sunday and you can't worship on any other day? Well, there are reasons for not being legalistic. I don't believe God, is, God wants us to overemphasize any day of the week. First of all, there is no commandment in the New Testament to worship on Sunday. We don't have a commandment. You must worship on Sunday. Paul didn't go from church to church and say, Sunday is the only day you can worship. It's not commanded. Secondly, the fourth commandment, which is the one about Sabbath, is the only one of the ten that is not repeated as a commandment in the New Testament. It's spoken of. The Sabbath is spoken of. Rest is spoken of. But as a commandment, in the form of a commandment, we don't find it. Third, holy days are a shadow of things to come and not reason to judge one another. This is very significant. The day of the week is not that significant, but it's the mood and it's the relationship with God that is most important. Not to worship days. And we find it from the Apostle Paul in Colossians chapter 2, as there were those cults that were going to emphasize and literally worship certain days of the week and judge one another for not doing likewise. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration or a Sabbath. Don't let anyone judge you about these things. These are a shadow of things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. So let's not squabble about what day to worship, what day to get close to God. There are practicalities here as we worship in corporate oneness, that is a church coming together, having its time. You have to set some time on some day of the week, but let's not fight about it. Let's not judge one another by holy days, what one chooses to do over the other. Some may say that it's only on Sunday morning that we can worship. Today, there's more flexibility where some churches meet on Sunday evening, some meet on Saturday evening, and I think that is good. They post their times and allow people to come uh, at convenient times. This or any other religious observance is by no means a way of gaining salvation or sanctification. Okay, it isn't the day of the week that sanctifies or saves you. It is, however, a means of deepening one's relationship with God. We have to have some day, some time set aside. But it's not so important that we do it on one day versus another. There is great flexibility. And it's all about Christ. One person may build their relationship with Christ by meeting with him very quietly on Monday. I work with ministers. Neither Saturday or Sunday is a good day of rest and worship for either pastor other than for the corporate aspects. They need a different day of the week to make their time of solitude with God because Sunday is very much a work day for ministers. They're exhausted afterwards. And Saturday is like the day before finals. They're preparing their sermons, their preparations, their times with God's people. Fourth, observance of the Sabbath must never be put above Christ. Mm -hmm. That is really important. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. The Sabbath or Sunday or any other day, other day is not to be our Lord. It is the Son of Man, it is Jesus Christ who is to be Lord and He is Lord of every day. Christ is the fulfillment of the law which also communicates that we become better law keepers when He, the law giver, lives within us. This is the point. 
to allow him to live in our lives and change us accordingly, not to impose one day or another day on another believer or even on ourselves. It's not a day that we worship, but it's Christ, the Lord of the Sabbath, that we worship. And that's what is important. Fourth, or fifth, the Sabbath is to be viewed as a gift more than a commandment. I believe it's intentional that in the New Testament we are not commanded the fourth commandment and to worship by way of command a given day. He wanted to make it an invitation, a gift. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. We weren't made to be forced into a day for worship. Rather, the Sabbath was a gift, something tailor-made for us. A times, times of worship and rest were given as a gift to us, not a curse and not even a commandment in our day and age to be forced upon us. Rather, it's a gift. The question is, why wouldn't a believer want to enter into a weekly Sabbath experience, whatever day it is, with all its benefits and enjoyment. It's a gift from God. If you gave me a gift, you'd be offended if I didn't open it. Weekly, God gives us a gift of a day which we are to take and utilize for our lives, to bring him close into our lives, to let him examine us and repair us. If I say no to a day of solitude, I'm in, in a sense, rejecting a gift from God. So it becomes optional in the sense that it's not a command. A demand on us is much more of a gift to us for us to enjoy guilt-free. The Sabbath was made for man, communicates that the Sabbath is a gift for the weary man, for weary man. The Sabbath is a plan which is designed to refresh man in keeping with God's example. Exodus 31, 17 again says, It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Jehovah made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. God himself was refreshed, and he invites us to be refreshed as well through a day of solitude and time with him. Sixth, those who have ceased the search for salvation have placed their faith in Jesus Christ. They are prone to practice Sabbath rest as evidence of their discovery. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 says, There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. And entering into a Sabbath rest is evidence that we have ceased our own works. We no longer are trying to earn our salvation. We've received God's salvation through Jesus Christ. We are no longer foistering, forcing sanctification upon ourselves. We have the sanctifier in us, ever working to do these things. And we've come to rest in his presence. And what work we do is always in tandem, always in partnership with Jesus Christ. And there's this beauty of entering not merely my rest, but God's rest. It's a mysterious text which will unfold and open up a little bit later on, on this day or one to come. Believers demonstrate the ability to rest from the restlessness of sin. A Sabbath practice then becomes more than a day in a week. It becomes a way of life and a witness. Sabbath, rest itself, is a reflection of heaven. Let no one judge you by which day you choose to worship, but rather make sure you have a time set aside for entering into his holy presence in solitude and enjoyment. Amen. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com.